All right. So today's podcast will be on naming. When you name a compound, you have three different types. You have type 1, type 2, and type 3. Type 1 is your metal and non-metal with fixed oxidation states. To name these, you will first name your metal. As in down here, your metal is potassium. So you just first start by saying potassium. And then you name your nonmetal. While adding IDE. In this case, it's your sulfur, and then adding the IDE is sulfide. And there you go, it's your type 1s. Alright, so that is type 1. Type 2. Um, it's the same thing, metals and nonmetals, but they have varying oxidation states in the metal. So to name these, we name our metal But then we have to determine the oxidation state of that metal. Once we determine the oxidation state, we then have to label it. And we can either do this using the traditional system, which are the Latin words, Or we can put in Roman numerals between the metal and naming the nonmetal. So it's either traditional or stock. After we label our oxidation state, we then name our nonmetal. And, like before, add our IDE ending. For example, copper has varying oxidation states. So, in, we start at the top, we name our metal copper. The oxidation state here is 2. To make this go neutral, O, we know, always has a negative 2. So copper is going to have a plus 2. So our oxidation state for copper is 2. If we use our stock uh, system, we're going to use our Roman numerals. And then we're going to name our non-metal, which is oxygen at the ID ending, ID ending is oxide. Over here, we also we have our metal and our nonmetal, and tin has varying oxidation states, so we know to use type 2. Um, but for example purposes, if we would use a traditional system, our traditional system, we'll use our Latin words, and we'll add the IC ending, the IC ending, if it has a higher oxidation state, and an US, OUS, for a lower oxidation state. So stantic here, let's see, O is going to have a negative 2, which is going to give this overall of a negative 8. So to make this even out, it'll be this has to be plus 8, divided by 2 will be plus 4. 
which is a higher oxidation state. So we're going to have Dan-ic and then oxide. We label non-metal and add the IDE ending. All right, so that was type one and type two, dealing with compounds that have a metal and non-metal. In type three, we deal with compounds that have two non-metals. So this is non-metal and a non-metal. For these, we um, name our anion. But after we name our anion, we must determine the number of atoms. We then use the Greek prefixes to label this anion. Those Greek, pref Greek prefixes are your mono, di, tri, tetra, blah, 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 blah. After that, of course, you're going to name your cation. And go through the same procedure of determining the number of atoms. And use the Greek prefixes. Um, I just put Greek prefix. And of course, like always, we add our ID ending to your cation. For example, so I'm going to mix up my colors. I'm feeling very colorful today. All right, for example, here we have oxygen and we have fluoride. Oxygen, we have two of them, so it's going to be Di oxygen and again we have two fluoride. Di oxygen adding our ID ending and our two dyes. Here we have silicone, silicon. And two oxygen, so it's going to be dioxide. Now, most people would think we put mono right here, but there is the one exception, of course, to every rule. And in this case, is if mono ever comes first, you don't say it. We just imply by just saying silicon that there's one. So not to be confusing, any other time you name your prefix, then your anion prefix, then your cation. When you there's only one anion, you don't have to use the prefix. All right, now try these.